what can profoundly define the trajectory of a country over the course of a couple of generations? In the case of South Korea, the answer is clear. It is the belief in the value of education and the dignity, the benefit that it can provide. My name is David Orban and this is The Context. I'm in Seoul, uh, the capital of South Korea. It is uh, a very interesting and buzzing city of over 10 million people in a nation of 50 million. South Korea uh, has been classified in 2021 as a developed nation by the United States. This means that until then, it was classified as a developing nation. As a matter of fact, it was extremely poor out of the Second World War and out of the Korean War in the 50s. 80% of the population and more couldn't read or write. And today, uh, it is a major technology hub, an exporter, uh, of television sets, mobile phones, uh, cars, uh, brands like Samsung, LG, Hyundai, Kia uh, that are known worldwide. Over the course of just two, three generations, it has been able to bootstrap the entire nation uh, into the Premier League. Definitely. Uh, the local culture contributed fundamentally to this. The belief in the value of education and in the belief that not only students but institutions and teachers and families of course have to work together in order to achieve the desired outcomes. Now today the question is not whether this approach works because it has proven to work. Today the question is how to adapt this approach to the current new realities. The extreme pressure on the students is visible in the suicide rates that are very high. Uh, one of the first in the world. Uh, the necessity to achieve and to succeed is not complemented by an understanding that failure can be part of it and that failure is not an end of the road, but it is maybe a bump or maybe a learning experience instead. The country is asking itself these questions. Maybe not at a sufficient degree. I am not aware uh, of uh, reforms uh, in terms of uh, how the approach to education at all uh, school levels could be adapted. The uh, challenge, of course, is how to stay competitive how to maintain uh, the growth in the um, domestic product that has been the traditional measure of economic success and uh, certainly improved the material quality of life of South Koreans. The uh, wealth and income in inequality in the country is high and the social uh, security network is insufficient, especially in protecting the elderly uh, who are uh, living in poverty in very large numbers, uh, a percentage uh, that uh, is close to 30% um, of the South Korean elderly live in, in poverty. So, as in many places in the world, 
Seoul and South Korea uh, lives in contrasts. And uh, these contrasts are unavoidable. They are preferable than uh, total homogeneous uh, equality uh, that uh, gives uh, no opportunity to excel, no opportunity to achieve, no incentive uh, to work on self-improvement that benefits the entire society. However, these contrasts need to be managed. So, for South Korea and Seoul, in the coming years and certainly decades, the new challenge is going to be how to adapt, how to uh, not only achieve material wealth, but uh, uh, balance and psychological, mental well-being in a society that has been able to push itself to succeed, but it must not uh, crumble upon the responsibility of succeeding at any cost.